watching, my name is Shauna with World of Washaba, and on this channel I talk about our homeschooling journey with my two sets of twins. I have five-year-old twins that are going to be six in a week, and I have seven-year-old twins that are going to be eight in a month. Crazy. So before I get into this video, I just wanna ask that if you like it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Also, the little bell will notify you when my next videos come up. All right, let's get right into it. This video is about the games that we love. And we have been really loving game schooling, which is a term I have come to seriously adore over the past year. And it's funny because when we think about games for little kids, I always thought of like shoots and ladders, Candyland, Old Maid, Go Fish. Those are all great games. But to be honest, if I'm being completely transparent, I can't stand those games. I mean, I cannot stand games and I love games. I am a diehard gamer of all things games. But those, I don't know what it is. Uh, Hi-Ho Cherio, maybe it's because they're just not stimulating enough for me. And I know that they're not for adults, they're for little kids. But what I kind of want to show you is that even when they're little, Kids can play far more advanced games and, and games that are really pushing their skills in strategy and logic and critical thinking and all the other skills that come with games, math and reading. And so I'm gonna share with you our top 10. This was such a hard video to put together because we have so many games that we play and so many games that we love. So when I'm showing you these top 10, just know that there's about 20 more that didn't make the list and it was so hard for me to actually pick 10. I might have to do a part two or something, but these are just the 10 that right now, right at this moment in this season, we are playing over and over and over and over again. But again, we're playing the other ones too. It's, it was just so hard. So here is 10 of our favorites. I think I will start with maybe kind of the easy, easier ones first. Now this first game I got on Amazon, it just popped up and there didn't seem to be anything too difficult with it, but it is called, oops, Unicards. My daughter is obsessed with unicorns. If you have a child that loves unicorns, I would suggest this game. So they are very colorful cards and there's some little bonus cards in here that tell you things to do. There's special cards like this. Now this is purple or pink. So if somebody's playing a pink two um, and you don't have any pink in your hand, you can lay this down and this will count as either pink or purple. And then the next person can play either pink or purple to continue the, the round. This one allows you to discard up to three blue cards. So the point of the game is to not have any cards left in your hand. And so it's very simple, but it, I feel like it's really good for beginners that haven't played a lot of games, especially card games, because you have to remember if your kids haven't even played a card game, they don't know how to hold cards. And that is a huge learning curve, holding the cards, holding the cards secretive, because you know, kids like to hold their cards like, like this, or they're talking. Um, it's very simple. So if you want just kind of introductory into card games, I would pick that one. But at the same time, you're also learning numbers and colors and shapes and uh, matching. So it's, I think it would be great for little kids as well. The next one is a newly acquired game. This is called Wig Out by Game Right. So this one has no reading. There is no reading on any of these cards. There are just a bunch of faces. In this game, everybody starts off with seven cards and then you put the rest of the cards in the middle and you take one card off the top and put it face up. And then you take another card off the top and put it face up over here. So now you have these two cards that are face up. Now it's a race and you are playing the cards from your hand that match the cards that are laid down. To create a new pile, you have to have two of the same person to create a new par party or pile, which then people can then place one of their cards onto. 
If you have nothing to play in your hand, you draw a card. So you're constantly looking and searching, seeing what other people are putting down. Oh, I don't have one. I pull one in my hand. I still don't have one. I pull in my hand. Now I have two of something and I can play that. It is a race. And so this is just really getting those quickness of like identification and matching and coordination because they're having to draw cards and watch the cards and then watch what everybody else is putting down. This goes by really fast. The way you win this game is you run out of cards and you yell wig out. At that point, everybody stops and you count how many cards everybody has, write that on a little piece of paper. Then you play five rounds. At the end, you tally up all of the points and whoever has the least amount of points wins. The next game is Sleeping Queens. This game is so beloved that we have two. We purchased this one and then they came out with the 10th, I think this is the 10th anniversary edition. It comes in this cool tin and it came with extra, um, or it came with new queens, new kings and stickers. So we had to have it. And now we play it so often that we've kind of come up with additional house rules to make it a little bit more challenging, make it last longer, make it, um, just change it up a little bit and we combine the two so we have lots of queens lots of cards and usually you play until somebody gets four queens or 40 points or five queens and 50 points depending on how many people are playing when we play both stacks we we call it um eight or 80 so we either need eight queens or 80 points or we'll do a nine or 90 or seven or 70 or something like that so in sleeping queens you are holding your cards and you are trying to wake up the queens that are sleeping with kings the kings are the ones that wake them up and you have your cards in your hand or i'm sorry these blue ones are the queens so the queens are down they're really fun my daughter had my daughters love the um, Butterfly Queen and the Strawberry Queen are their favorites. And there's some others and there's points. You can see the point value at the top of the card. So there's some good addition skills being used. Then the other cards you're holding in your hand, you hold five cards in your hand and you wanna play the kings down and then pick up a queen. That's how you, how you do it. But the whole time that's happening, people are stealing your queens but you can stop somebody from stealing your queen by playing a dragon. Or they're trying to put your queen back to sleep and with a sleeping potion. To counteract that, you can play a wand. There's also fun cards like the jokers. And so when you put the joker down, then you turn over a card. So this would be a nine. You would count yourself first, go around and whoever um, you land on saying nine gets to pick a free queen. And then there's, here's some of the kings there are. There's the puzzle king. Um, there's a fire king. The next game is saboteur. And in this game, you are a dwarf mining for gold in this uh, labyrinth maze of tunnels. But some of the dwarves are saboteurs and they're trying to um, steal all of your gold. So there's little paths that you create and then different cards. There's broken lanterns. There's busted pick pickaxes. Um, people that are trying to steal your gold. Uh, this has no reading on it. These are just pictures. There are not even numbers on the card. So here's a picture of a saboteur. It looks like he's trying to bust down, looks like he's trying to bust down the mine. This is one of our newer games. We haven't played it as much, but I'm loving the simplicity of it. And by simplicity, I mean, it's just another open and go card game, but there definitely is so much skill and logic and critical thinking that you need to have to beat this game. And it is lots of fun, saboteur. The next one I'm going to talk about is money bags. This is one of my kids' favorites. I actually bought this one because they were struggling with learning coins and everything and in the math book and so I heard of this game and I got it we played it for a couple days I mean we play it longer than that but when we first started playing after just a couple days they got it they had money it, I mean that was it and then we take turns being the banker 
Um, this one is just really fun. You have your bag of money. So you're starting here and you roll the die or dice and you move that many spaces, you receive that much money. And on your turn, you also spin this. So this says no dimes. So let's say you land on 10 cents. But if you roll a no dimes, I have to figure out a way to get you 10 cents without using dimes. Or if you land on no quarters, but you land on a quarter, I have to figure out a way to give you 25 cents without using a quarter. And then over here you have money bags. This is where you keep, in, in the rules it says you keep one of each coin there. And so then whoever lands on this dollar sign gets to collect that money. Then the other part to this game, you can see right here, it says change it up. That means that you take all of your money and you change it up. So if you have 10 pennies, you're gonna get a dime. So now they're learning how to change money up and then the banker is exchanging that. So this is just really good for learning the money and the value of it and basic math skills. Okay, we're halfway through. <laughs> The next game is Kinder Bunnies. My husband and I own Killer Bunnies, and so when I saw they had Kinder Bunnies, I thought, well, we have to have this. This is just cards again, and we got the um, bonus edition, so it came with extra yellow cards. And then it comes with these fun, see if I could do this without letting them fall, um, fun colored dice. There's uh, green, orange, purple, blue, and yellow. And in this one, you're holding five cards. And the objective of the game is to have the most bunnies or carrots at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points wins. But then, of course, everybody's trying to steal your bunnies. And here's a couple pictures of, of the different bunnies that you can have. There's smart bunny, make them return a carrot. So there's some reading in this. And some of them are pretty long. There's also money. And then money can be used to buy carrots so now we're, um, or to give to other players. There's also cards that say things like feed the bunny. So if somebody plays this on you and uh, you can't feed your bunny, then you have to put your bunny back. Now in this particular one, it's showing that you have to feed your bunny cabbage. So if you have a cabbage card, then you get to keep your bunny. And the safety hazards are just basically you're gonna roll and you wanna see the number that's on the safety hazards. But there's some other fun cards, spin to win, there's bad news, bunnies get stolen, there's uh, sneaky burglars that you have to match up after you roll, kind of like finding a code, fugitive bunnies. This one, prime time, roll the dice. If three or more prime numbers shown on the clock are rolled, then take a carrot from any player. So now the kids are rolling all the dice to try to get those prime numbers. But this is definitely one of our favorites. I mean, obviously, because it's in this video. All right, now we're getting into the games that have a little bit more challenge to them. The first one is Ticket to Ride First Journey. This is your board and you see all the train tracks there. It goes from East Coast to West Coast. You see some main cities and all the different colors of train routes. And you have to place your trains so each player gets a different color of train. And you get your cards here. These are the, the colors of trains, of, of uh, tracks that you have to match on the board. So basically, if you're trying to go from um, Seattle to Calgary, you're gonna need either three red, which you would have in your hand, or three black, or you could have two red and one black, or um, one red and two blacks, whatever combination gets you there. And so if you have those cards here, you would play them and then you would place your trains, one, two, three, to that connection. And if that's the connection that's on your trip card, then you win that trip. And whoever, whoever completes six trips wins the game. And then if let's say I play one black and two reds to Seattle, Calgary, 
but somebody's trying to go Calgary to San Francisco, they would play the openings of what I left here and then fill these in. But if I'm trying to go this way and somebody al already has their trains taking up both of these tracks, I have to find a different route to get to where I'm going. And that is basically how you play Ticket to Ride and it's it really is a lot of fun. The next one is Munchkin Treasure Hunt. My husband and I love the Munchkin games. We do own the board game, but we prefer just the card games. But this one for our littles is a board game. See, there's a lot going on in this board, a lot of detail. You're basically going around the board and you're fighting these monsters. Uh, if you land on the ghost, he's got a power of eight, plus you draw a monster card and whatever that monster card is, you add that to it. So if I drew, this one is gross, plus three to monster. So I would add eight plus three, and then that would be 11. Then I would take the dice and I would roll. And if I got 11 or greater, I would win, and I would be able to pick up three treasures. The treasures are gonna give you things like armor. This is a plus one bonus, a re-roll. And so there's lots of different options on here. Um, we play this all the time. We love it, it's fun. And my seven-year-olds are fine with it. They're absolutely fine. The five-year-olds, they do well, but I just have to help them a little bit. The next game, love this one, Dragonwood. Dragonwood, oh, this is so good. So there are the monsters that you fight. Here's a secret shadow. These are the points that you would add up at the end of the game to see who wins, so that big four. The other points here, this is what you would have to roll if you wanted to strike, if you wanted to kick, or if you wanted to yell. That's what you would have to roll. And then there's crazy bats, there's fire ants, and it goes all the way up to the really hard to beat dragons. Um, there's one of the dragons. It's an orange dragon, and then there's a blue dragon. Along the way, you'll come across things that can help you. So there's a sword, and this gives two points to any strike. There's a magical unicorn that my daughter loves. This adds one point to all capture attempts. And then there's events that you can draw. Sorry. So this particular one says, all players must discard one adventurer card. The adventurer cards are these ones, there's different adventurer cards, and this is going to tell you how you are able to fight the monster. So in some of them, if you have three of one color, you can do one particular thing. Another one, you might have to have, it, does, it won't matter what color it is, but you'll need to have cards in a row, eight, nine, 10. And then another one you'll have to have matching so it does, again doesn't matter what color and that's going to tell you whether you can strike kick or yell and the amount of uh, dice that you're able to roll but my son and i will play this like for hours back to back this this is probably his favorite the last game is the one that we is our most recent game and the one that's probably going to raise the most eyebrows but we have been having so much fun playing this. We played for four hours the other day. The next day we played probably for another four hours broken up throughout the day. We just love playing this game and I play it all, with all of my kids and it is pandemic. And this is not a child's game. This is an adult game. Here's your board, kind of looks like a risk game, doesn't it? So these are all, it's broken into colors. So you have your blue, yellow, black, and red discard piles. This is if you get outbreaks. And here's the disease. There's four different diseases and you want to cure the diseases. Once you cure all four diseases, then you win the game. But you can go a step further and try to eradicate the disease, which means you clear all of the same color off the board and then you've eradicated it. These are the cards that you do not want. Epidemic cards. 
you can make the game harder or easier by the number of epidemic cards you put in. So when my husband and I play, we play with four. That's how the game says to start out. But when I play with the kids, I just put in two and it's still you know, pretty challenging. Everyone starts off with a career. So you can see that it's pretty, there's, there's some good amount of reading and understanding because each character has a special job that they can do. And how it's been going is my son loves to be the medic. He can swipe all the diseases as he goes by. My daughter likes to be the dispatcher, mainly because it's purple. And uh, she can move people around. My other daughter likes to be the scientist. She can cure diseases quickly. And my other son likes to be the operations expert because basically because he's green, but he can build research centers all over the world. And then I usually am the researcher, so I can give um, cards to other people easily, which can help them cure the, the, the diseases faster. These are your little diseases that you put all over the board. These represent all the little diseases. There's also blue, but that's in a different bag. And then you just get these country cards. There's also some event cards that'll help you along the way. And once you get five of one color, then you can go turn those in at a research center and cure that disease. And then after each turn, you are flipping over these cards and you flip over two after every turn and whatever card this is, you add a cube to that city and that's a disease. And so it's kind of a race to cure the disease before it just overtakes the whole you know, world. And there's a bunch of ways that you lose this game. <laughs> and the way to win is to cure all four diseases. This is how I play with the kids. So the way I started out in case you're interested, I gave each of the kids a disease color. Like I said, there's blue. It's just mixed in with these other pieces that you get. Um, and so they were each in charge of their own um, disease color. So when I would turn over the cards and say, okay, I need a yellow disease in Khartoum, they would then put the disease in Khartoum, which is great for geography, right? And so whenever it was their color, they would put the cube there. They would also take them away. So if we went there to, to treat a disease in that country, we would take it away and then they would, they would take that back. But then after playing that way and they could see kind of the flow of the game, that's when I decided to just give everybody their own career. And now we're all playing the game together with our people, with the diseases, and it is a, it's a cooperative game. So we're either gonna win together or we're gonna lose together. And that would, that's what I think makes it a little bit easier because we're all talking about and we're all trying to reach the same goal. And that is it for my, for, 10 of our top favorite games. I don't wanna say our top 10 because there are still so many other games that we play. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments if there are any games here that you also love to play or any of these games that you're now thinking that you might need to get. Also, I would love if you left in the comments any games that your family loves to play because I am always up for getting a new game. Again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe and I will chat with you next time. Bye.